The Education Facilities Company Limited tells a joint select committee of parliament one of its main challenges is the failure by its contractors to submit certificates for completion of work. It was the EFCL's second appearance before a JSC in just under two weeks. The June 5th meeting having seen only one board member in attendance. While it was a much fuller house today, but as Janine Brown tells us, the absence of one senior member did not go unnoticed. Committee Chairman David Small described the absence of Senior Legal Officer Nessa Rahim at Friday's meeting as worrying. Ms. Rahim, who previously served as Corporate Secretary of the EFCL, was summoned to the committee meeting by the JSC. Because we made a specific request to have the Corporate Secretary, no Senior Legal Officer, but still on the payroll of EFCL, to attend this hearing. Because we believe it's key, because from our understanding, the board is new, fairly, only a few months at, at best, so that someone with some institutional history and memory would be able to guide this committee better. Acting General Manager of the EFCL, Dennis Cox, said that the company has so far been unsuccessful in reaching the employee. By telephone, by email, and also we delivered, delivered a, hand, um, a letter by hand to her home. And also, yes, last afternoon, we delivered a letter from, on behalf of the Joint Select Committee, which was addressed directly to her, and we received no response. The business of the day eventually took off, with officials asked to respond to allegations of corruption which have plagued the company for quite some time. One such concern was the alleged issuing of payments to phantom companies. Mr. Cox said he's not aware of any such happenings, adding that there is a clear process that's followed when the company assesses potential contractors. You know, your technical, um, the technical report will give you details as to your registration number, your VAT number, and it would, um, in fact, indicate to EFCL that the company is bona fide. But while the EFCL is confident in its assessment process, submissions of completion of work by contractors has been an ongoing challenge. If I would answer broadly, all the contracts that were suspended would be in a situation where we talk about 94 contracts that has not reached the stage of, um, or have not reached the stage of completion. So therefore there would not be a completion certificates. One example raised was some $15.5 million in outstanding payments under the heading Special Works, which Mr. Cox said cannot be paid because the work cannot be accounted for. Which As it relates to what Chairman David Small described as mass termination of senior officials at the EFCL, the committee has also requested a written explanation for the firings. Janine Brown, CNews.